Can a plus size male model make it in today's fashion world? We're going to speak with a legend who, if he were to start giving out hugs on the street corner, he could start his own cult. They're just that good. I am honored to speak with Kelvin Batiste. Stick around. To Live Terminally, a podcast about changing your mindset and rediscovering life. Welcome, everybody. My name is William Wiltshire, and I have Kelvin Batiste with us today. He is a fashion model from Los Angeles, California. He um, he is a uh, one beautiful soul, and you will be lucky to have met him in this podcast. I hope you get a lot from it. But let's get started with it. Kelvin, welcome, welcome to to live terminally. Well, Thank you for joining for us. Having me. Thank you for having me as a guest. I'm so excited to speak with you and just to just just vibe. You are. I've been looking forward to this conversation for. Um, a while now or ever since we first spoke. So thank you for, thank you for coming on. Anyway, let's just get to it. Kelvin, why do you do what you do? Why do you do it? Why not? Like, why, why is there, why, like, why does there have to be a reason? Like I'm just a, a working guy. You know, just you know, just doing my thing. You know, I, I um, I I do it because it, it's it's a it's it's my dream. It's it's what I see when I see myself in my head. You know, I see me as a fashion model, and I see me representing for the world. You know, no matter the color of your skin, no matter you know what you look like. You know, I am you know a representation of just excellence you know in any in in mm-hmm. any shape you know and um yeah you know i think that's why i do it so but what i know there's got to be hard days there's got to be really good days what on the hard days what drives you to just get up and do it again and and again and again and go to audition after audition after audition and you know i'm sure you, you know obviously you get some um, you know, offers and you get turned down on some, but when, like, what is it that just drives you? Like, was it something that you had from a a, a tiny, a kid? Like, when did you know that I want to be a fashion model or I want to do acting? I, that's a really good question. I, um, I think it's just, it's always been my narrative, honestly, um, I did the first time I was the first time I was ever on stage was in third grade. My third grade teacher, Miss Calhoun, put me on stage, and we had to do the class had to do like um, a dance to "Stomp" by Kirk, Fra- Kirk Franklin, and it was like is 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 it's but like as my third grade teacher was really special, and I think she instilled a lot of confidence within me through her confidence within herself. She was a very strong, beautiful black woman by the name of Tracy Calhoun. And she, you know, always spoke about confidence, always spoke about um, just um, enthusiasm. That was her word, enthusiasm. And, mm-hmm. she, you know, yeah. she like she she kind of changed my 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 mind or gave me an idea of what I what I like, you know, what gave me a thrill. And, you know, being on stage for that first time, just like having all those eyes on you and. Um, just having to do all, you know, like all the hours of rehearsing and preparing and then finally to present it and, you know, have those eyes on you and for it to be received well. Um, that was a thrill for me. You know, it, it was it was something that was just like, whoa, this is kind of like bigger than me. And um, and it was fun. And I think from then on, I just kind of just stuck with theater. And that was my I would say that was the gateway to kind of where I am today. Um, Mm -hmm. because after elementary school, like I got in, you know, in middle school, um, I like hunted the drama teacher down my first in sixth grade to get into, um, to get into play production, you know, had no, like had no idea what I was doing, but I just knew that that's where I wanted to be. And sure enough, I got in and I did theater all through middle school. Um, and then all went through high school and, um, 
And yeah, and you know, high school, I, you know, I got to, um, I, I got to um, like kind of just do it, like do it all. Like, you know, like, like dabble in like photography, dabble in dance, dabble in, you know, just mm-hmm. like everything. And um, it gave me a lot of perspective just within the arts. And um, that's, that's truly where my passion lied. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, in my twenties, like I kind of like, went in and out, you know, but, you know, obviously life kicks in and you got to survive and you got to work and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, like, you know, the, the, the entertainment acting life is not the easiest life and, you know, it is a grind. And I, um, you know, I, I just still had what I, I still like, you know, had, um, you know, still had that driver that want to, to pursue it. It was just always in my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it, nothing was happening, you know? And then, um, I went on a cast. Well, I was like, look, went on a casting, um, met a casting director who was just like, Hey, you know, I, you know, I would like to see if you would be interested in doing a fit modeling type a type of like job or whatever. And, um, it was like, okay, um, you know, let's do it. Let's see what goes, you know, what happens. And, um, I did that. And um, it was just like a, a scrub line, like a, um, like a, a scrub medical line. At the time, I was working at an orth- orthopedic office. What do you mean by what do you mean by scrub line? Um, like just like a. It was like a medical supply store. It was like a medical supplies website. Oh, oh, scrub. That sold, okay, that sold okay. Scrubs, you know. And at the time, I was working. Got you, got working you. Working at an orthopedic it's office. Funny that I where to... where we met and. Um, gotcha. And so, funny like, that I, I had to get in, that clarified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like literally just walked in with my scrubs on, and then they were like, "Oh, these scrubs look good on you." And I was like, "Yeah." And then you know, booked the job, did the shoot. But then at that shoot, the the photographer complimented me and was just like, "You know, you have a really good look. You know, you you know, you have really good proportions. You know, it's it's bad. It's kind of messed up that there's no market for plus size men um, in in the you know on the market. But you know, good mm-hmm. luck to you." And so that was like a, a ding in my head. Good luck. Yeah, it was like a but yeah. but that moment was the moment where I was like, okay, change of plans, let's 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 shift gears, yeah. let's let's do something that has not been like touched yet. You know, let's let's tap into something okay. that hasn't been touched yet. You know, I already had an obsession with the I already had like an obsession with the fashion world, with modeling, with everything, but it was an obsession that was like something that like I knew I could be like, I could be in it. Like I could be like, I could be, Mm -hmm. I could be in, in the world, but I couldn't be the person. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, it it just always seemed like based on like media and, you know, all of that Mm -hmm. stuff. It was just always like, you know, you never saw a plus male model on any magazine Mm -hmm. or barely, you know, any people of size and, you know, um, advertisements or like any type of marketing, like, you know what I'm saying? I definitely, I think it's, I think it's wonderful that you're seeing all types of body habitus models in the forefront these days that absolutely, that actually represent, um, real people. And, um, I think it's, I think it's amazing. Take me back, take me back to the beginning though. Tell us a little bit, just a little short synopsis of your history like where did you come from are you from los angeles or um you know like what was your background like did you did your parents just encourage you to go into this like how did, um i mean no speak to but, me <laughs> i um so I, I was born in california i was born in san bernardino california um i i was Been here there. into until i was about three years old then i moved to colorado springs colorado Stayed there until I was about six, then moved to New Orleans um, for two years. And then when I was eight, I moved back to L.A. um, and then pretty much grew up in L.A. Um, So um, so it was it's interesting because um, like my earliest, like my memories of just like the world, um, like when I lived in Colorado, it was very, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall. Like, you know, it was very four seasons, very, you know, just by the book, you know, just, you know, very like snow and, you know, you know, brown leaves and everything like that. And then go mm-hmm. to New Orleans and it's color, it's vibrant. Everyone's loud mm-hmm. and, you know, it's just like, it's, it's energy. It's, Party. Yeah. It's, it's just like a, you know, just like a rush of, of just color, yeah. like it's life. Just, 
you know, just vibrant color. Um, yeah. And then not to mention the sound. Yes. The, the sound. Yes. Sound yes, yes. The sound. So awesome. Like it was just, it was just yeah. like, it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's stimulating, you know? Um, and yeah. then yeah. You come to LA and it's like a melting pot of just, um, just people like, you know, I, yeah. I, the, I remember the first, the first real time I heard Spanish being spoke were people of color, they're Belizean, um, Belizean people. But, yeah. you know, it was just like mind blowing to me that like, okay, like, you know, I didn't know, like, I didn't know that, you know, we could speak Spanish. Like, you know, it was, it was, it was just, it, it was just so many, like moving to LA really like opened my mind on just like cultures and just, you know, mm -hmm. heritage and just like so many different types of people all together at once. And yeah. uh, it was, yeah. it was, it's just really, really kind of cool to think back on. So then were, were your parents encouraging or I don't know, mother, father, were, were they encouraging in the, in pursuit of the, of the arts? Like, did they? I mean, well, my um, dad, um, my dad was very, my dad, my dad had a plan for me and his plan was football. His plan was like <laughs> sports, 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 you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I never, I, I never could get with it, it. Like I could never get with the sports thing. Like, yeah. you know, I looked at, I, yeah. I honestly looked at, at football particularly as something that was like humiliating. Like, I, like, I just didn't understand why <laughs> people played. Sport. Like I didn't understand it. Um, but also at the yeah. time um, when, when he was really like kind of pushing it on me, I, um, I, I was, I was going through some things. <laughs> like, I was just like, I don't even feel comfortable around boys. Like, I would rather hang out with girls. Like, I don't, I don't, gotcha. like, I don't want to do any of this. Gotcha. It's too much. Um, and my, what about your mother? Uh, she kind of, um, she, she let me do, she, um, uh, like, how do I, how do I explain this? She, um, how do I explain this? Um, where do I start with this? Um, I'm getting it. You didn't have much support. No, 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 no. no I mean, I mean, like from, from the actual biological parents, no. Um, and everything was pretty much, um, um, like everything was just pretty much my, you know, just my, just me, you know, just me wanting yeah. to, or me just being, you know, always like infatuated with, um, you know, just the glamour of just like mm -hmm. Hollywood and fashion and just like how, you know, yeah. everything just looked so fun and effortless. And um, I think that mm -hmm. was what attracted me to the idea of it. Um, and then when I started doing theater, it, um, it, it fulfilled that, it fulfilled that in a way for me um, in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, just having that moment to shine and having that moment to do whatever and having people receive it and it be received and enjoyed and, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, just, just, you know, just contributing, contributing, uh, contributing, what is this? Um, just Contrib contributing to um, just like <laughs> a fun time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, So you didn't have much support growing up. The, I find it, I find it amazing that you were able to stay true to yourself and stay like honor, honor the, the dream that you had deep down inside. Even when you didn't have the support of those closest to you, you were able to stay a true North to Kelvin. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, you know, but yeah. through, I mean, through, through one, one thing or another coming at you, kind of per, trying to persuade you to go, you know, live out my dream or live out your dad's dream or, you know, don't live out Kelvin's dream, but live out mommy's dream or daddy's dream or, or, you know, grandma's dream or whatever. But you were able to see through that and push through that and live out Kelvin's dream. And so, <laughs> I want I want to know what made you finally take the leap because when I met you 
you were doing something totally different. And, um, you, man, God, you were a beacon of light, a beacon of light. And when I met you, something clicked. I had nothing to do with me, but after I met you and after I'm, you know, something clicked and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm living for Kelvin. I'm not living somebody else's dream. I'm living Kelvin's dream. What was it? What made you take the final leap? What made you look death square in the face and say, I'm not afraid of you. I'm going after my dream. Oh my God. I was not ready for these questions. Um, I, um, <laughs> I, um, wow. Well, thank you. I, um, I, sorry to, I don't, sorry to I throw mean, that one off. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel, um, let me ask you this. Is there a Kelvin without modeling? Is there a Kelvin without acting? Or is there just an empty shell? Like, can you be Kelvin and not do what you do right now? Like, can you be your true self? Like the full manifestation of Kelvin Batiste. A saint plus model, plus size model saint with a French last name. <laughs> I think it's French. I don't know. Yeah, I think so too. I, um, I, I, um, I mean, I, I feel like I am still discovering myself. Like I'm still, um, I'm still like revealing things, like finding out things about myself that I didn't even know. And I'm still learning about me and all that, all that is me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel that, um, I, I don't know if there's a, if there's a, like, if there's a, a me outside, I mean, I, I definitely feel that there are, the, the, do you feel do you feel most alive when you're doing what you're doing right now i do i do i feel i do feel most alive when i'm doing what i do because i know what i'm doing is something that was not even a uh, option for me 10 years ago 20 i'm yeah. not 20 years, but just like you know years ago for anyone you know what i'm saying yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a thing you know it, there was you know lanes specifically assigned for people and you know, society has a way of like, kind of like telling you where you should go. And, you know, who, who, who is, who is anyone to tell me what I should, or what, who, like, you know, who, like, no one can tell me what I see in my head or what I dream or what I, what I want to contribute to the world or, you know, how I should see myself. I, um, yeah, I, um, I still feel that I, um, I've always just been, a boy with a dream, whatever that dream is, I always focus on it and try to, um, yeah. you know, lead with that, you know, but I, um, I don't know. I, um, I don't know. <laughs> so you, you have for only doing this for the last five, six years, you have a pretty cool resume. You've done shots with Nike, Puma, uh, Apple, Amazon, you're the face of Ulta. I walked into the little podunk town that I live in now and I see my brother Kelvin and um, makes me super proud. Um, from somebody who is scared to death to be in front of a camera to somebody who thrives, I look at your resume and I see that, you know, you've only been doing this for a couple, really, I mean, very, not a whole lot, of, not a very long time. And there's some big name. You've had some real successes here, but I, I know that's come at, a, at, I know you've had to face some serious, you know, obstacles with that, you know, to, to overcome maybe the mindset to be confident, confident enough to even seek these out, mm -hmm. which I find just beautiful and absolutely impressive. There's, 
um, like, you know, being a plus size model and you're new to the game, like this is, this is, this is like totally against culture for as long as I know, you know, this is something that's totally new and exciting and, you know, and you're one of the first to the game. So being a plus size model, and unfortunately I hate to say it, and but in this country, there's still, there's still issues with race and you're, you know, so you, you're plus size model and you, you have, and you're black, even though you're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then you're also, you know, you're, you're, you're gay. And all three of these things put together and you still find the power, the motivation, the, the ability to put whatever aside and, you know, and you say like, I'm beautiful, I'm perfect, and I'm going to go for it. How do you do it? How do you do that? Like most, most people you know, if you don't fall into whatever the, the cultural norms are like, you know, if you're not Republican or you're not Democrat or, you know, some stupid label that we put on people, it can wipe them out, just kick their legs out from underneath them. But somehow, and you're just starting out and it's not like you're in a, something that's been going on for, I mean, you're like kind of paving the way. How have you been able to overcome all that and just see yourself for the beautiful person that you are and just go for it. There's been a lot of projection all my life of, you know, you, you can't do this. You shouldn't do this. Or people like this shouldn't do this or people like you or whatever mm -hmm. the case. And I just never, um, I, I just never, I never took it to heart because whatever, like whatever someone would tell would say about me like it's just like well that's not how i see myself so it's like why should i believe how you feel when that isn't even how i feel even though you're saying this is who i am like mm -hmm. no one can tell me who no one can tell me my limits no one can tell me you know what's right or what's wrong if it feels right in my heart or if it feels like this is mm -hmm. something that is is for me and with modeling i always had an obsession with just the fashion world in general and it was one of those things where i always knew that like i like like i'm always like looking outside the window like looking into like oh my god like you know mm -hmm. these like gorgeous like you know these gorgeous like thin models and i have a i have a, a skinny obsession i love i love skinny like i love skinny don't get me wrong like i really do i love it but also, yeah. I, I love myself and I love my body and mm -hmm. I feel that I can stand right next to a skinny person and we can, you know, work it out together. Awesome. You know, it's it's fun, that's you awesome. know, and that's how it should be. Um, and I just yeah. feel that um, I, I just felt like I hadn't, I never had, like, I don't have nothing to lose. Like, you know, if I am, if it is wrong, you know, then someone will eventually, like, I, like, if it's if it's wrong or if it's not for me, I will get the feedback from the universe. But the universe has been telling yeah. me otherwise. So I just listen to the universe yeah. and listen to what yeah. my heart says, and I just follow that. So what did it, what what is it about modeling that 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 gives you the passion? Is it the like the actual fashion of the pieces of clothing? Is it the art behind the like the the poses? Um, is it all of the above? Is it, I don't know. What, it what, what is, is it? All what, of the above. what excites you about it? Um, it's, it's almost like, it's like poetry and stillness. That's how I, that's, that's how <laughs> I see it. If I like, if I'm like looking through a mag or if I'm like walking down the street and I see a photo on the cover of a magazine that gives me a, yeah. an emotion or gives me like, like a feeling like it's everything for me. If I like scroll through like an, a, a, a magazine and I see like, a fashion story and the way that they're moving and the way the clothes are hanging off the body, the way the face is, is absorbing the makeup, like the way the hair mm. is like quaffed. And, you know, I just love the brilliance of the presentation. And I always wanted mm -hmm. to be a part of that presentation, like models who like mm -hmm. walk and hit the runways and, you know, they do their walks and they do their poses. It's like, they are, they are, they are doing the damn thing. And I want to be a part of 
that way of storytelling. And um, like I said, mm-hmm. I did theater growing up and I really connect theater with modeling because it is like a performance. It is like, you know, you're telling a story, but it's like a silent movie and you have to use body language, you have to use certain expressions. And, you know, it just, it, it calls for, you know, an element of like romance. And I I, I just love yeah. it all. And I, I, I just always yeah. wanted to be in that world. And um, I never thought it yeah. was, a, I never thought it was, a, I never thought it was a possibility. Um, I never thought it was a possibility, but I, um, why not? Be, um, it was, um, I felt like at one point I accepted the fact that it was just something that wasn't like, it wasn't in the cards for me, but I still wanted to be a part of the world. So at one point I started to kind of dabble in photography. Um, and then at one point I started to kind of dabble in like creative directing and, and creating the stories and, you know, like finding like other models to like be, a mm-hmm. you know, be a part of these stories that I create. And then, you know, I did that and I was just like, no, that's just not it. And, um, and then I started saying, thinking like, you know, like, well, like, what if you became like, what if you started modeling and, you know, did that? And, you know, the one thing about modeling is the jobs. And if there's no job opportunity, how can you be a model if there's no job opportunity? So, mm. you know, that, that was that. And then literally about a year later, when I went to that shoot um, for, the, for the scrubs, the guy said, you know, he literally said, too bad there's no market that was like the the thing for me to be like okay there is no market but it's slowly going to be in demand so if i start now Mm -hmm. in a couple years when it starts to take off i can be one of the forerunners of the game like of the genre and you know actually be in there and so it was like little slant little little slant little seeds that i that i planted you know within it you know very passively um and when the pandemic hit, it was just like, okay, like what, I have nothing to lose at this point. Like the world is ending, mm-hmm. people are dying. The world is like about to shut down. Why, like, why not, you know, why not? You know, you, yeah. you've done everything else, just go for it. And the moment I kind yeah. of just gave into the idea of pursuing modeling, that's when it happened. And yeah. that's when like things started awesome. to like, you know, kind of reveal itself. and and opportunity started yeah. to come my way and I really started to work and really work yeah. towards this dream that I thought was so like, like such a stretch, you know, I remember there yeah. was like, I would, I remember when I started to first like really like speak on it, like kind of tell people like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about modeling and people like, people be like, what, like, w- like what, like why, like, like how you know what i'm saying and it's just like wow like it's so crazy that that is such a a a wild concept for people to wrap their heads around like you know when when there needs to be more representation in in media and you know in advertisement Mm -hmm. and you know just showing the world what the world really looks like you know not everyone is one standard size or has one standard look the thing I love about you is you are not afraid to go there. No, absolutely like, you're not. You're not afraid. Like some of your photos are very uh, revealing and I mean, not inappropriate or X-rated or anything. Not that uh, it, nudity some, is I mean, some, inappropriate. I mean, some do, I mean it's, but it's expressive, I would say. It's very expressive. <laughs> and the, the, I, I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's, I think it's wonderful because you are an inspiration for so many, so many, but just like you're going to be an inspiration for those who are scared and wanting to go forward and live out their dreams or their passions, who, or where do you draw inspiration from? Like who inspires you? Who do you look at? And you're like, Oh yeah, that's what I needed to push me through today. Beyonce. Absolutely. She is like, she is my, my, she is like literally like my, like my male figure. Like when I was a kid and everyone like was looking at the rock and everything like that, I was like, this is my guy right here, Beyonce. Like, this is, this is my person. I'm rolling with her. 
And it was only because I was, you know, doing theater. I was always on stage and she was always performing on stage. So I always like paralleled that. And I'm just like, you know, she's like, when she goes on stage, she attacks it. Like she goes for it. And so when I went on stage, I attacked it Mm -hmm. and I go for it. And like her music is a soundtrack to my life. Like I, I truly, that was the person who taught me confidence, taught me like how to really like, how to how to do it and you know how yeah. to, and just like just like just be just just be just to be the one like you know and yeah. i um yeah that was that was mainly that was my inspiration growing up when i was like when i was a kid i had like my whole side of the wall was beyonce beyonce everything and destiny's child of course That's awesome. but um yeah that was that was what i that was my focus <laughs> My my wife got to meet um, Beyonce when Destiny's Child was doing a concert in, uh, I think, at Disney World no or something way. like that. They were nobodies. They were opening for somebody. And she was just sitting there waiting for the concert to begin. And Beyonce was out doing something with mics or whatever. And Beyonce actually said hi to, you know, my wife. And um, I don't remember all the details, but yeah. I'm just like, dang, that's pretty crazy. Of course, you know, that was probably, you know, a hundred, 150 years ago. Oh, man. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she got to meet her before, before she was, before Destiny Child. They may have kind of blown up, but they're still opening for whoever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she's, she's pretty inspirational. She's a pretty amazing woman. Yeah. I love her. Um, so tell me your hair, you have this unique <laughs> style this unique, like, um, what do you call it? Um, brand branding or whatever. How, what do you do to your hair? How do you get your hair to be so damn perfect? Well, it's like perfect. There's, there's nothing's out of place. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there is, some, it's your signature. That's what it, it is. is. It seems to me, it's yeah, like I mean, your signature. It definitely is my signature. Um, it's something that once again, like, like something that I visualize within myself, like within just my head when I, like when I see myself, um, uh, no, actually, uh, um, where does this start from? Like, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an word. So it's honestly like, so, you know, I do have like Creole heritage and, you know, the men, and I'm like really inspired by like the, the, you know, like men of like the forties and fifties and like, you know, like mm. the, like, just like how, like, they would like just style their hair. And, um, gotcha. and so like, I always wanted to just like be a part of that in in a way. And so, gotcha. like, you know, when I, would, I can definitely see that. Yeah. So when I would like do my hair, like when I like had this idea to like, just start kind of like slicking my hair down and like, you know, just like, you know, doing this like kind of like coffee type of, you know, thing, it was like, yeah. I was just thinking about like all of like the, the men I admire within that, that era. And, you know, even like the James Browns, you know, and like, just like, mm-hmm. you know, just like all of that, you know, just, just it's very expressive. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, my, just my hair. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. So, what are some of the, like when you go to an audition or you're at a shoot or whatever, what are some of the obstacles that you would encounter like from, I don't know, cameraman or I don't know. I've never, I've never done this before. Um, I feel for the most what part, everyone, everyone's very supportive. Everyone's very encouraging. You know, there, I, I do get the shock, like the, Oh, like, you know, like, okay. Like, you know, you're, you're here too. Okay. Like, you know, like kind yeah. of that type of energy, but everyone's usually supportive. I feel that, um, I feel that regarding like shoots sometimes, um, you know, if, you know, on my size card, like it says my size, but when I show up to set, there's like the, the clothes that they have are two sizes too small. And it's like, you know, you see, you, you see, you know, my sizes, but like you still like only brought other sizes because you mm. didn't, you know, want to take extra time to do research or, to like ask me, you know, where I get stuff or, you know, whatever the case, um, you know, kind of same, you know, with hair and makeup sometimes, like sometimes I get to set and makeup artist um, doesn't know how to like, you know, 
have you know do makeup for me or you know have mm-hmm. the proper coverage like you know i you know i'm a i'm a black person but also like i have i suffer from hyperpigmentation and you know i have like dark spots and that needs to be corrected mm. before i get in front of camera and you know some people don't know how to do that don't understand it so i'll end up looking mm. gray or ghostly and that's gotcha. sometimes a problem or you know i'll you know i do have I, my hair you know my hair is you know that's my look and you know when i get to set you know i will show up in a fro and you know look mm. at them like hey you know this is your job like you're going to get credit for this so you need to get me right and you know 7 times out of 10 you yeah. know they don't know what they're doing and i have to do my hair myself or they'll text me the night before hey can you just show it with your hair done and then all they would do is just maybe like um touch up or you know be there in case i'm like getting a little hot on set um <laughs> that's that's probably another obstacle like you know, I, I get hot. So like I, I need a fan, I need like a little dab here and there. Yeah, um yeah. that's that's an obstacle for me for sure. But that's that's me. <laughs> but I um I um but yeah, those are probably the those are the, the normal obstacles, like having to just know that I have to be my stylist, do my hair, sometimes do my makeup. Yeah you know, make sure that I look correct before I step in front of the camera because at the end of the day, I'm the one that's, you know, I'm selling the image. I'm the one that mm-hmm. is the, like, I, you know, it's me. Yeah. So I got to make sure I look good. And also, like, I'm I'm representing, like, body positivity and I'm representing, you know, like, um, you know, just, like, equality, like, you know, just yeah. within size and, and um, I just want to make sure that, you know, when I am in front of the camera, that I look just as correct as the standard size model and that, you know, I don't look, you know, I don't look messed yeah. up. Yeah. So do you find that um, people in the industry, industry, are becoming more and more welcome to the idea of plus size modeling and Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that I always, it is I always still, thought that I always thought that they would be very progressive in ideas and, you know, yeah, I and, think and it's it. a, it's still a new idea for a lot, for a lot of people. And it's still something that needs to, we need to still furthermore the conversation and, you know, just have, we still need to do more inclusion, but I do feel that there has been a shift and that mm-hmm. um, there is, you know, that, you know, change in progress is happening and, um, you know, and I'm here for it because it, what, you know, <laughs> what would you like to see happen? What would I like to see happen? I would like to see more plus size men represented on, mm-hmm. on fashion magazine covers and editorials being paired up with standard sized female models or male mm-hmm. models and be included in those fashion editorials, have more men's sizes on the runways. Like, there are big men in the world who want to dress nice and who want to be a part of the fashion world, who want to be, you know, a part of that conversation and that story. And, you know, we also are consumers and we Mm -hmm. want to wear it. You know, why are you guys not catering to us when we make up a percentage of this, you know, population as well. And we deserve to look good too. Everyone deserves to look their best and, and feel confident and, have that available to them, you know? Do you think that there's more, do you think that the representation of like plus size women versus plus size men is like disproportionate? Do you think there's more plus size women? Yeah, but it's because the, the, the door opened for plus size women earlier. And Mm. so they, they were trailblazers for, for us, in my opinion. You know, it, it was, it was, you know, that needed to happen first and it did. And, you know, there was like models like Crystal Wren and Marquita Pring who were for me, like plus size, like idols, like, you know, like they were mm-hmm. the ones who like showed me like, Hey, you know, if, if like, if they're like, if they're killing it, I could kill it like them, but just as a guy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I can, I is, can do that too. Is there a lot of like, I mean, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm medicine and, um, music, but, uh, is there, I mean, a decent population or a decent, you know, um, I mean, there, plus there, size there can always, 
oh, plus size my models. Um, from what from the 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 guys that I know and the guys that I see, there's about a handful of us. Um, right. and um, yeah, um, I I can name maybe five, six, seven of us. Now is this in um, the, is this in LA or is this like this is from from just from or... from my from from what I know from what I see on Instagram what I gotcha. see from you know the the board on uh, my agency um you know the the people who I've worked with um you know it's not that many it's not that many of us guys yet but it's yeah. happening it's definitely happening absolutely I mean you look at the <clears throat> the population you know, the arts, I think the arts should lead in ideas and in, you know, where culture goes, but it also should be representative of the great, you know, the greater community at large. And I mean, that's just the reality of these days. I'm not a small yeah. guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a plus size person and um, I like to dress nice. And, you know, why not? Why not? Why not represent myself yeah, like the best I can? Why is it not available? Like, you why know, am why... I, yeah. Why am I any less beautiful than, you know, somebody who's five, nine and 135 pounds? Yeah. Um, so I, I think, it, I think it's wonderful. And I, I, I'm encouraged to, to see that, see it go that way is from your, from what you've been able to see is this something that's more kind of unique to the united states or is it something that's kind of happening worldwide i feel it's definitely happening worldwide um yeah it's it's happening you know where i feel like with with internet and everything like we're all connected you know like yeah you know all at the same time and so it's definitely happening happening worldwide um yeah. you know yeah hey if you're digging to live terminally Please like and subscribe and tell someone, spread the word. Let's all get on it. Let's get after it and start living. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.